Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I am here today to finally do my Stacking the Series TBR, and this is the All Romance Edition. So this is going to be all about romance series that I am reading, and I am really excited about it. Um, I've already done a TBR video for Stacking the Series for 2020 for books that are more of the sci-fi, fantasy, and weird related, um, in, 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 in conjunction with my sci-fi, fantasy, and weird exploration. I will leave a link up for that up above and down below if you would like to check it out. Um, but before we get too far into this and do and explain what Stacking the Series is just in case it happens to be new to someone. Um, Stacking the Series is a reading challenge, an a an annual, like a year-long reading challenge that encourages you and I think supports you in reading book series. You usually go with a five series minimum um, and for one series you pick five books to read from that series, so that's your five book stack, and then you pick a series to read four books from, and then you pick another series to read three books from, and then you pick yet another series to read two books from and then the shortest amount of books you read is one book from one series so it ends up being a stack of series five four three two one and overall if you do uh five books uh, like a five series stack you end up reading 15 books total um and then you work your way through five different series you can choose to start new series progress on series complete series or do a combination of all of those things and actually with the romances my in my one did end up being a combination. I thought I was going for lots of finishes, but that's actually my sci-fi fantasy and weird one. I really went, I, I went really tough on, <laughs> on trying to work in ones to finish, but with my romance series, I actually am progressing on a lot of them. Some of them are catching up to the current releases, those kinds of things. And what I've actually decided to do is I'm going to do two different five book stacks, two different, sorry, five series stacks. So I'm going to do one stack for historical romances and another stack for paranormal romances and urban fantasy because those are the two subgenres I read the most from. So I am going to start, I'm going to share with you all of the different series that I'm going to be working on. Um, for the paranormal romances I will share sort of like what the world is like and then for the historical romances I will share what the period is like. Um, and if you really love the idea of stacking the series I highly recommend checking out um, Sarah from Steeped in Books. Hi Sarah! Um, she has a thread on her Goodreads group where people show and share their progress for stacking the series and we'll leave a link to that down below in the um, description box for you to check out. It's a great place to um, find ideas for stacking the series um, and I found for romances I don't tend to read a lot of romances that are more than five books long or more than six books long so that's another reason I decided to go to five series stacks is I had more to choose from um, and some of these I haven't read for a long time so I was not super committed once like I was a little uncertain if I wanted to add like a seven book series that I haven't even read anything from it for years so <laughs> so one or two or even five felt like doable but seven felt like I'm not sure I'm up to that challenge but I'm definitely up to this challenge I think I'm going to start with the paranormal romances let's see let's see what the next slide is <laughs> All right, yes, it is. Okay, so we are going to be talking about the five stacks from Paranormal Romances. For my one book stack, I will be reading Blood Magic by Nora Roberts. This is the third and final book in the Cousins O'Dwyer series. It's a paranormal romance that's current day set, but has some family history magic-y stuff going on, and it follows three different cousins that have some magic and are drawn to someone else. And so it is a paranormal romance, the couple shifts per book, um, and I really enjoyed it. It started with Dark Witch, which was fabulous. Um, I think I like that the most out of the two that I've read so far, but I just want to complete the series. I have enjoyed it so much, and I have not read it for years. So one book and, and it's going to be finished, so it is time to do it. So that's my one book stack. My two book stack is the uh, Alex Craft series by Kalan... Kal I can never say your name. Kala... Kalania... Kalania, maybe? Price? Um, this is an urban fantasy series. It follows Alex Craft. She's the protagonist. Um, and she has the ability to speak to the dead. And she often does this to help the police with cases. So it does usually have a sort of mystery vibe of like a current mystery to solve throughout the each book. Um, and I'm actually well into this um, series. I read the first one when I was doing going through the vaginal fantasy um book club backlist. It was there for the very first 
book that they read was the first book in the series, which I think was called Grave Witch, I think. Um, so I'm actually quite far into it. I just need to read books five and six. So this is book five, Grave Ransom, and that will get me caught up. Um, the seventh and final book is being released this year in 2020, so I would love to read that as well, but it's not included in this challenge. Um, I am just going to start next with Grave Ransom. I haven't read this one for years. I really liked it, though. Like, it was really easy. I, urban fantasy um, is really like I just get the worlds and I really enjoy them so um, I felt very at home in this world where she talks to the dead and there's other urban fantasy type stuff um, but yeah it was it's really cool okay so for my three book stack this one's a bit different so this is I'm going to start with One Fell Sweep by Alona Andrews this is the Innkeeper Chronicles um, and this one so I need to read three books from this and I really thought there was only one book left I thought this was the third and final book, but lo and behold, there's a book four and a book 4.5. Now, I am including novellas or in-betweeners in this. Um, I have no problem with that, so I hope nobody else has any problem with that. Um, as long as it's three titles, that feels good enough to me. Um, but yeah, this was initially the conclusion to the series, and then now they have a book four and a book 4.5. So I don't know if it's a spin-off series, um, because I don't want to read up on it, because I thought this was the finale for a long, long time. So anyway, I'm excited. Alona Andrews is one of my favorite author author teams. It's a husband and wife uh, duo. The Kate Daniel series is one of my favorite all time series, like ever, ever, ever. Um, it's, I think it might be since like the first series I read in the past several years that I felt so strongly about that I would call it a favorite and from early on in the series. So I'm really, and I really enjoyed this one. I forgot to tell you what the world is about. This is urban fantasy, but it has a bit of a sci-fi spin to it because um, there's some science fiction elements, but it's really cool. The protagonist is an innkeeper and innkeepers have like a symbiotic relationship with their inn and the inns hold um, our, our inns for supernatural and paranormal um, people. So if someone's like a magician, uh, I don't remember if they have magicians, but if Shifter or, and I don't want to spoil it because I've read a couple of the books, um, but yeah, so anyone who is a supernatural entity, shall we say, um, or has tendencies can stay at the end and it's a, like a safe zone. They're not allowed to engage in like fighting each other or anything like that. But it is a world where the supernatural and the paranormal are unknown to everyday folks. So most people don't know about it. So it is sort of like this secret, you know, it looks like an inn, but the only people who stay there are people who are, you know, have supernatural tendencies, shall we say. So yeah, so I'm really looking forward to this. And if I complete the three books, I will catch up with all of the books that have been released and enjoy this potential continuation or spinoff. I'm not sure. I am not sure. That's my three book stack. My four book stack I've talked about a lot recently, and that is the Side Changeling series by Nalini Singh. Um, I'm currently reading Caressed by Ice. I have been looking at this picture so often in the past couple of videos. Oh my gosh. I hope everyone's okay with seeing lots of abs because there's lots of abs in this uh, video. Anyway, um, so this is an urban fantasy world. It's got a bit of a sci fi spin to it, too. Um, there are three major players in this world in terms of groups. There are shifters um, and there's humans and there's psi and the psi have um, like um, psychic ability telepathic uh, telekinetic uh, precognition um, and they run a lot of the sort of business world if I understand it correctly and and they sort of there's a long arc plot conspiracy stuff and often it's it's paranormal romance so it shifts the um, protagonist book to book it's a different couple book to book and usually the couple is is some is two people of different things. So like it's a, it's often a psi and a shifter. And I imagine there will be other ones where it's a shifter and a human or a human and a psi or is that all the, I don't, is that all of them? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this one has a long arc plot. It is an extremely long series, like 17 books, including a spinoff, and I don't even know. I'm reading book three, four, five, and six. That's my goal. I read them very slowly. Really, so even putting them as high as four was a little like, am I going to do it? Am I going to make it? So hopefully I will make it. I am enjoying Cross by Ice. I just happened to read Nalini Singh very slowly for some reason. I, I'm not sure. They are pretty intense. There is a fair amount of violence in them or violent things that happen sometimes off screen. So that's one of the reasons why I haven't quite come back to it. But I have a feeling that this book will let me know one way or the other whether I can, whether it feels like a good fit for me because it's dealing with some pretty heavy stuff. And I don't think it'll get worse than that. I'm not sure. 
we shall see. So that is my five book stack, and uh, let's see what my six book stack is. Okay, so more paranormal romance, and this is the Blood of the Dracon series by N.J. Walters. Um, this is the one that I randomly picked uh, for a readathon last year, um, and didn't end up reading the book I picked and I don't know it doesn't matter so <laughs> this is a paranormal romance so it has different um couples per book and there are dracons and dracons are the kids of a dragon and a human um and they are so far it looks like they're only men we'll see I don't know um and because uh, I've only read book one <laughs> so and it's so and and it's they're not known dragon dracons are not known to the rest of the world however there are properties from dracon blood that really really are powerful so they are sort of wanted by some humans but generally humans do not know who they are they also are pretty much immortal so this is this was a really interesting read I found it really engaging but it was and it was very fast paced um, I really enjoyed the first book and I'm looking forward to reading more my next one to read is Dracon's Prey which is book number two and I plan on reading books two four five and six two three four five and six for a total of five books so those are the five urban fantasy or paranormal romance series I think there's there's three paranormal romance and two urban fantasy although side changing I think is the the differentiation is is that um paranormal romance tend to to follow a different couple book to book and urban fantasy tends to follow the same protagonist but I think side changelings feels more urban fantasy to me it really there's so much world building and such a long arc plot it feels too walk the line shall we say okay so now we are going historical romances let's see what the first one is i know what it is okay so the first one is stolen by the viking by michelle willingham the series though is called the sons of sigurd this is a harlequin historical series it was released this year there's going to be five books and they are all coming out this year one thing that's a little bit different about this series is that all of the books are going to be by different authors which is really interesting um and um i have already read this one yay tick mark I really love Michelle Willingham. She is one of my favorite romance um, authors. So I read this right away. Like I bought it, I pre-ordered it and I don't do that very often. I pre-ordered it. It was a March release. I read it in March. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, this is set in the Viking Age or the early early Middle Ages. Um, and this particular book is mostly set in 876. Um, and all of the books look like they follow the sons of Sigurd. So they all have the same father. Um, and uh, yeah, and this one was set, I think, in this one was set in Ireland, but it had a Viking, the guy was a Viking and the woman was from Ireland. So I have already read this. Go me, one whole stack complete, because it's only a one book stack. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Next up, my two book stack is going to be okay. This is *The Devil's West* by Laura Ann uh, Gilman. This is this is pretty unique because it's and it's only very lightly romance. But I read the first book for the Vaginal Fantasy Book Club, and I think anything that. I read for that it gets a pass as a romance because it was a romance book club so even though there was not really a lot of romance in this I'm including it because it's a bit different than anything else this is set in the in an alternate history an alternate American history like an alternate American West um, and the American West tends to be uh, is from 1850 to 1910 and then there's also some magic in this one but it's also not a super known thing um but the protagonist seems to have some abilities affinities those kinds of things it has been several years since i read this one i did have some challenges with the first book mostly because it i don't think it has any chapter breaks <laughs> So it's really, so I'll have to come up with a strategy and maybe just read 10 pages or, or something like that or read by a timer and stuff because I found it really, really hard. It might be in like three parts or something like that. I'm not sure. But I'd really love to see where the series goes because it is very different um, and it had a very sort of haunting atmosphere. Um, and like how many alt histories, alt Western history, US Western, like is there with some romance? I don't know. Do you know any? Do you know any? Let me know. <laughs> so my plan for this is to read book two and book three, and uh, the second book is called The Cold Eye, so I will be reading that. Uh, these The whole series is available on Scribed, which I'm really excited about. Several of these, several of these are? Don't quote me on that. I actually think the most of these I'm actually getting from the library, so, but some of them, the... Uh, the Blood of the Dracon series is also uh, inscribed. So, but yeah, okay, three book stack. What could it be? 
Okay, so we are going to, is this right? Castles, is this right? Say yes to the Marquess. Yes, Tessa Dare's Castles Ever After series. Okay, now this one, I have a question about this one if, if people have read it, but first let's talk about it. Um, so Castles Ever After by Tessa Dare, the first book I read for the Vaginal Fantasy Book Club. It was hilarious. I loved it so much. It was very fun. I don't always love books that people describe as fun or funny or witty, but this was so good. This was so good. So this is set during the Regency period, which a lot of romances are. Uh, and the Regency period is tiny. It is tiny. 1811 to 1820. That's it. Nine years, and it was when Prince George was serving as Prince Regent. So that's why it's Regency. He was the Prince Regent at the time. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, but it's very, it has that sort of light energy that a lot of Regencies do. Um, and it is the first book followed um, a female uh, or a couple um, and a woman was told she inher inherited a castle. And then she goes to the castle and it turns out someone's there and he really thinks that it's his castle. So, and then, so they have lots of wonderful banter in terms of like who owns the castle and it's just great. So that was book number one. So I'm planning on reading... Uh, the next book to read is book number two, which is Say Yes to the Marcus. I think it, I looked it up, and it looks like it's Marcus. Or I, thought, I always thought it was Marquis, but it's not. That's with um, less letters. But I looked it up, it said Marcus, so Marcus, okay. Um, I feel so anglicized. <laughs> But anyway, so I'm planning on reading at least books two and three, but this is my three book stack, so I need to read one more book. The challenge here is the final book of this series, book number four, is the fifth book in the Spindle Cove series. So I'm like, what? I had this plan, and then there's a wrench in the works of my plan. So I'm not sure what to do. I will consider this stack complete if I read either the three books from the Castles Ever After series, or... Alternately, if I read two books from Castles Ever After and one from Spindle Cove, because Spindle Cove has been on my TBR for a very long time, and I only noticed well into this planning process this whole like, like messy thing where the book four here is book five there. Normally, I, I know with romances, often it doesn't matter if you read uh, books out of sequence and stuff like that, but because the Spindle Cove series already is on my TBR, I don't want to start with book five, I want to start with book one. You know, I really do. So if you have read both series, let me know in a spoiler-free way if you think it's better to go like two, three, and then Spindle Cove, or if it's totally fine just to read two, three, and four, um, even though the fourth book is also part of Spindle Cove. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that, um, and um, because I'm really looking forward to coming back to this series. Okay, my four book stack. We're getting lots of books here, lots of books here. So more, more Marcuses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we are going to the Worth Saga by Courtney Milan. Now, <laughs> to harken back to what I just said, I actually read book 2.75 of this series last year for Readathon, and I loved it. So I'm going to go back to the beginning um, and read book one, Once Upon a Marquess, um, and uh, <laughs> just continue on up until to the book I've read. So because that one I read for a readathon and it was actually this one's really cool because it looks like all of the in-betweeners, all the 2.5ers and stuff are all LGBT titles. I know the one I read was the 2.75 um, uh, which oh my gosh I can't remember. Miss Something's Marvelous Adventure, Extraordinary Adventure. It was awesome and, and the two the protagonists were in their both the ladies were in their 60s and 70s. It was so good, and they, there was a scandal, this cousin that they went out, it was wonderful, it was absolutely wonderful. Um, these are actually set during the Victorian time period, so the book one, I believe, is uh, set in 1866, and the Victorian period was 1837 to 1901, um, and so we don't tend to see tons of romances, I find, during the Victorian period, because it is pretty known for being pretty uptight. <laughs> But apparently, maybe not so much. So I am planning on reading um, this book. I am planning on getting caught up with this series. And it has in-betweeners. So I'm planning on reading book one, book 1 1.5, book two, and book 2.5. And that's Once Upon a Marquess, Her Every Wish, After the Wedding, and In Pursuit Of. And I've read the 2.75 title already. So if I read these four, maybe I will reread 2.75 afterwards. 
Anyway, so um, I really enjoyed this. I think I think the one that I read was my first uh, Courtney Milan, and I loved it. And it had a great afterward about legalese and stuff like that. She's awesome. She's awesome. She's really awesome. And generally, she's awesome. Follow her on Twitter. <laughs> okay, so the last series, the five book series to finish this all off is... The Spy Masters series by Joanna Bourne. Um, and this is one, another one that I read for the Vaginal Fantasy Book Club. Um, this one, it didn't have the year in the books that I looked up, but from my memory, I believe it is set during the Napoleonic Wars, which is 1805 to 1815, uh, which is the Georgian period into through the Regency period. Um, and, um, and it followed, a, the first one followed, um, Spot, like it's spies it's an espionage historical romance so like seriously and I am I'm curious to get back to this one the first one did take me a little while to get through so I was a little hesitant to put it at this high of a stack with five whole books to read but if I read the five books I will either catch up with or complete the series it doesn't say whether the sixth book is the final book but it is the most recent book that has been released and it was released a couple of years ago um, so I am hoping that it could be a complete series or maybe just to catch up to all of them um, so I'm going to be starting with the second book which is my lord and spy master and I am really really curious about it and also if you have read the first book in the series which is called the spy master's lady I would highly recommend checking out the vaginal fantasy um live chat or live um live show for it because they had a special guest for that one and it was it was really awesome especially if you're a fan of Buffy the vampire slayer it was um it was pretty, their guess was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so there we go. So that will complete all of the books. That was all of the books. So many books. So overall, this is two five book stacks, which will be, um, or sorry, two five series stacks, which will be a total of 30 books. This is really ambitious for me. I do not read as much romance as I used to, and I miss it, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this challenge and get back into the rhythm of things and finish off some series that I've started, continue some series that I'm not sure about, because some of these I'm like, I haven't read them for years. I really hope that I enjoy them. I'm way more settled on the paranormal romances. Like, those are series that I know a lot better. Some of the historicals are a little more outside of my comfort zone, um, but not all. Some of them, I'm just... I just can't wait to get back to Castles Ever After and to the War Saga. Those were both really, really awesome. Um, so, and it would be great to finish some of these off. I think what I'll do is I will alternate between the two genres. So right now I'm reading Crest by Ice, um, which is a paranormal romance. And after I finish that, I will go to one of the historical romances and read that and then bounce back and forth. That's my idea. So hopefully I will read them all and read 30 romances or more if I I read, I'm sure we read other random romances <laughs> throughout the year. And yeah, so let me know your thoughts on this. Are you doing stacking the series this year? Um, what do you think about doing two different stacks? Am I totally like, is this completely unrealistic? Do you think I'll do it? Let me know. Do you think I'll do it? I'm not sure. I'll start. I've already started and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Even just working on the TBR was just a blast. So there you go. I will leave a link, a uh, list of the books down below or the series down below. And of course, to Sarah's Goodreads group for you to check out. And yeah, I just, I gotta get reading. That's It's a lot of books. So I, I gotta work on that. So thank you so much for watching.